Hey up and welcome back to the Demis Helen channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at ways to structure transcodes. We're keeping it very simple so people can follow along. It's designed really for those that are really struggling to kind of get things off the ground and come up with melody ideas. So what we're going to do in Cubase is we're going to take a three note chord sequence and we're going to turn it into an eight bar sequence by the end of the video. I'm just going to show you different ways that we can approach the chord structuring. So if you have any questions about what you've seen in today's video, please let me know down in the comments. And also, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Let's get started on the building of these notes. So if I was to start with an F chord, for example, we're going to get some sort of classic elevated trance. And if I just draw these notes in, I'll just show you. We're on 16th notes, by the way, and we're using a dotted eighth rhythm. And if we were just to mimic the bass here and copy that down, so we're just doubling the root note. And then we can build up on this. We can then say that goes to there and that goes to there. We can see that's out of key, but looking at these, we can see that we need to go down to a C because that is in the key. You could go up to a D, but the reason why you wouldn't go there is because we're doing the standard triad. Even though this is not a triad, it's the first two notes of a triad. We're missing a note between each one. So we've got an F, then we miss the G and we've got the A. We've got the G, we miss the A and we've got the B. So we've got the A, we miss the B, we've got the C. If we did to D, we'd have two notes missing out of the scale. So it's going to there. And that will give us a nice all round sort of really bog standard translead. That's all good and well and if you're happy with that that is brilliant but if you wanted to develop it a little bit more there's going to be a few things we can do first things first we could start by making these into complete triads so if we copy all of the top notes here and that will complete that and that will go up to an e so we're just one note miss the note one note miss the note one note and we're all on white notes because we're in A minor. I've put these notes here so you can see that we're in A minor and I'm using scale assistant here as well on A, Aeolian, natural minor. And that's a feature of Cubase once you've clicked scales and chords up here. So if we go out of key, it's gonna be orange and it's gonna tell us. That is classic and cheesy. Now that is a first, a third and a fifth. I'm not going to go into great detail on the chord structures. I'm just going off the idea that you're already going to know this. And we have covered this in a previous video, so I'll put the link on screen for you. So what options do we have here? Well, we can shut that down, copy this over and open up a new section just so we keep that melody if we want to go back to it. And let's have three instances of that same groove on each bar there. So the first option is we had this, that was our original option. The second one is we could remove the third and have the first and the fifth. And the third option is getting rid of the F. So we just have the A and the C, the third and the fifth. And straight away, we've got three different options for chord starting positions. One of those is probably gonna sound better in a track that you're making. And if you're struggling to make the simple way fit, try one of these two and see where you stand. We're gonna look at a third option in a second. I'm just gonna expand on these three ideas and then we'll come back and look at a different option to sort of broaden your creativity when it comes to creating leads and melodies. We've already created the first melody here. So I'm gonna get rid of this one and we're gonna start with this idea. We'll come back to that one after and we'll create the same melodic sequence that we had before, which was like this. And you can see it's kept everything in order, but we're just using the fifth note instead of the third. This is more airy, it gives more space in the track and it gives you some more room to maybe layer other sounds and put the third in different sounds and layer it up in different ways because we know sound and timbre affects the way the chord sounds as well. And you'll see this sort of technique in cinematic compositions and film scores like that. It gives you options to have open air between strings and then you can kind of move and weave other instruments in between the gaps. And it makes everything sound full instead of just stacking loads of things on top of each other, you can actually interlock elements. So let's jump out of that one and go into this one here. So we've got the same chord sequence but we're gonna do this with the third and the fifth note. So instead of that being there, that's gonna be there, that's gonna be there, and that's gonna be there. So now we've got the bass separated from the top, so there's no duplicate notes from these top chords. Mm -hmm. 
Personally, I think that sounds better. It sounds cleaner. Personally, this is the starting position that I would start with this melody. If I was creating this one, it sounds cleaner. Everything's out of the way. The bass has got its own space. There's no duplicate notes in the melody section, the actual chords above, and it just sounds clean. So here we are back at the beginning idea. This is the original idea and we've got the F in the bass. So we've got the double in it up there. We've got the first and the third note. So the previous demo that we just looked at was the third and the fifth and then the bass was the first note. So they were separated and it sounded cleaner. So why not think in a different way with this one instead of moving these notes and having what we've just had instead of letting these define the chords which is an F, a G and an A why don't we define it so that we actually have a D, an E and an F for example. So this is really simple all we have to do is drag these down so I'm going to put this onto D and I'm going to put this onto F. So let's familiarise with the original. now with the new position. You can hear that gives it a whole different feel and I'm going to explain quickly why and then I'm going to show you a quick way to layer these together. The answer lies in this uh, scale. So you can see from here even though this note's not in it it's classed as a whole tone. This is a half tone and then this is a whole tone because we're skipping a note and then another one whole half whole whole so what's the difference between the two bases is we've got a d jumping to an e so that's a whole tone and then this one jumps from e to f which is a half tone so that is the key factor in this if we return this back to how it was we've got three whole tones in the bass drastically changing how that sounds. That sounds very linear, whereas this one has a little bit more character added into it because we've got that half step in there, even though there's no half step in the melody whatsoever. If you look at the top chords here, we've got a whole tone to that one and we've got a whole tone to that one. We've got a half step here in the top half, but we haven't got it in the bottom like we would do if we just use that in the bass. Really, the simplest one that you can come up with here is if we shift these along just one second. Jump back into here. You can see we could just use them side by side. So I'm going to have that as my second round. So this is creating basically an eight bar sequence. I'm going to put these back up to where they were. You could just use them in sequence, exactly the same chords, different bass positions. Okay, it doesn't quite loop back round in the nicest way, but we could just change up the ending to make sure it does loop back nicely. But you can see they run into each other really well. And the only thing we've done is changed the bass. So we've got an F, a G and an A chord in that one, but then we've gone to a D, E and F chord in that one. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you have any questions about what you've seen in today's video, please let me know down in the comments. And if you haven't already subscribed and you're new here, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the videos. And it would be great to see you around in the Demis Helen community. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.